I thought it was a dog that came up out of this creek area here. And he was right here, coming out of the came out of the woods up here, sniffing around. The uh, coyote, he was just standing there, almost sitting, just waiting for us to come around the corner, and you know, and we just had this little staring contest for a few minutes. Right on the other side was a coyote having his morning drink. Less than a month ago, right up the street, another pair crossed the street. And I was a little bit surprised, so I got my camera and took a picture from inside. Oh, but I saw a lot of people walking with their little dogs that morning, so I hope that isn't the breakfast that <laughs> the coyote was looking for. This animal was collared in 2009. The VHF collars last about five years. I can hear him now. We have some information on him and his mate and the pups that they've had over the last two years. And when you're an alpha male, you have a, ho a very tight home range, a tight territory, and so He's pretty regular and consistent. We know where to go and find him. I'm in a location now. We can go ahead and take a bearing. Copy, any specific time in mind? Now, if everyone's ready. Roger. You get to know these animals, when you start tracking the VHF animals in a, for a very long time, you get to know them in sort of a voyeuristic way, like, you very rarely get to see them, but you know they're out there and you're monitoring their movements and their their location every 15 minutes, half hour, hour, something like that. This one seems to have a very laid back personality. He doesn't really get up until about 10 o'clock at night and then he wanders around for a few hours and hunts presumably and does his thing. Then he goes to take a nap for a while and then he'll get up again and do his thing and generally he kind of quits around dawn. Well, we have been working with coyotes over the last 10 years in the metro parks. In the past, most of our work was monitoring, it was passive monitoring, uh, through the use of howling surveys. Over the last couple of years, we have noted um, a slight uptick in the number of calls we get from the public regarding uh, concern over coyotes. Uh, for the most part, these have been people who are seeing coyotes in the park, um, they're concerned about it. We haven't had a lot with regards to uh, true coyote-human conflict, but we really wanted to make sure we kept it that way. All right, well, I'm in the field for a lot, and uh, I, I have good reception here. Yeah, so what we need to do is, in order to triangulate, I need to know the GPS location of each person um, that is stationed in three different locations. And then I also need to know when we get out to take a bearing, I'll need to know what their bearing is. Four, five, five, seven, eight, two, five. Four, five, five, seven, eight, two, five. Correct, correct. Copy, thank you. Uh, locates a wildlife telemetry program. It's very basic. Um, we use it on our Palm Pilot. What it does is we are able to put in our locations. So we have person one, person two, and person three out on the landscape. We put in the GPS locations of those people who are stationed out in the landscape we put in the bearings of each of those and it will triangulate for us and give us a location of the VHF beacon or in this case the coyote. The extensiveness of the study came in a couple of different ways. Number one was we were attempting to put collars on as many different animals as we can. Just like us, coyotes are individuals. They behave differently. They have their own sort of rhythms and patterns. And just studying one or two animals doesn't give you much of an overview of the population as a whole. The second extensive nature of the study was in the field site itself. So we could have looked at coyotes within a single park, but they travel long distances. They can move throughout the night. So we chose to try and distribute the collars that we were using across the Cuyahoga Valley as a whole. And these collars, this new technology allows us to do that, whether we're using traditional VHF 
collars that require us to go out in the field and track them with antennas or whether we're using the higher tech GPS collars that sort of give us real time information on how the coyotes are using the space. This, this is a trap we've been using. It has a lot of things built into it that help to ensure the animal's comfort and safety. Number one, it's uh, we got a good anchor in the ground. On the chain, this is actually a shock spring. Can you see that? And what that does, when she lunges, it slowly reduces the tension. So in other words, if she had a straight chain, she, she wouldn't get that uh, dampening effect. Mm -hmm. So that helps to help, you know, um, prevent yeah. damage to her foot or her, her arm, arm. If this trap didn't turn and twist and it was held in one position, she might get damage to her foot or, you know, the rest of her body. So we could have multiple clumps of grass or, or roots or whatever get caught. She can still swivel around to prevent mm -hmm. damage to her. So, got her under completely with the isoflurane. We'll give her a physical exam here. So we'll get some uh, hair samples next. Uh, we'll get fecal samples, check for parasite load. For the blood we're taking, we're going to check a number of different parameters, kind of a health screen, um, CBC, a complete blood count, blood profile to check for uh, electrolytes, liver, kidney values. We also take blood to check for uh, virus uh, titers. We're going to check for parvovirus, distemper, and then also for rabies virus to see not only if there's possibly been some exposure, but a lot of these guys were finding that they're eating some of the uh, uh, rabies vaccine bait and they're actually becoming uh, inoculated. I think the, a lot of the public um, immediately goes to being a fear, a fear of coyotes. and. That's not everybody, because a lot of people have uh, a, a liking of wild animals, period. But a lot of people immediately go to fear and what to do to control them. They don't understand that they're part of the, uh, when there are problems, when there are conflicts with coyotes, that the people are oftentimes the root of the problem. Whether they're feeding them intentionally or unintentionally, that's the kind of thing that habituates coyotes. Coyotes want to be, don't want to be with people. They do their best to avoid people. Um, people will see them, and once they start seeing them very frequently, then they start worrying about what's going to happen to my dog, what's going to happen to my kid, or something like that. But coyote attacks are rare. Uh, they do happen. They can't say they don't happen, but they're very rare. And almost all the time, not, um, they're a result of coyotes being habituated to food or something, being, being more comfortable around people. Coyotes are probably the most persecuted animal um, ever. There's no restricted hunting on them. There's no limits. There's no, you can hunt year round. You can trap them during the season. You can trap them as a nuisance animal. You can trap them because of um, predation of animals uh, like cattle and things like that, sheep. Um, people shoot them, people poison them, um, and there, there's more coyotes now than there's ever been. Um, coyotes can adjust their output of, of pups uh, depending on basically how much food there is and how many other coyotes are around and they'll They'll adjust if coyotes are taken out of an area other coyotes will move in and they'll adjust their reproductive rates to fill that area So when we're discussing safety you want to keep your pet leashed You want to stay on the trails we do know from our study that coyotes prefer to stay away from humans uh, they are active at night and they do try to avoid us. If you are concerned about coyotes at your home, to prevent encouraging coyotes into your backyards um, is to not feed wildlife outside. Anything from putting dog or cat food out to pets that you um, have or feed outside to even feeding birds. I want to put this collar on with a little bit of growing room. We're lightening her up a little bit under the anesthesia. 
just uh, so that when we reverse the injectable meds, she'll come up and around a little bit faster, but not too fast. True conflict is when there's an interaction, a physical interaction or an aggressive behavior by the coyote, and that's rare. Most people that's, that see a coyote, that's not a conflict. Most of the time that coyote will, you're lucky to see it. Most of the time the coyote's going the other way when you see it. So if you do see one, you're, you're one of a few who have been able to see one, and you should enjoy it. It's a, they are um, very fascinating animals, and surviving among us and surviving in rural areas also, they're, they're a fascinating animal.